Hello, everyone. My name is Bill Mischel from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. And along with my colleagues, uh, Mary Schlumbach and uh, Alessandro Cabada, I uh, welcome you to this presentation on bibliometric and research impact services at the uh, University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign Library. Uh, first, a little background on uh, research impact and uh, uh, research productivity. Universities, universities are uh, in many different contexts utilizing research impact metrics. Um, I think most of you have seen uh, them being used, for example, in promotion and tenure. This is something that we do a fair amount of uh, here at Illinois, uh, uh, assisting departments uh, with uh, information about uh, research, uh, a number of articles published in uh, time cited in H index. Uh, it's being used uh, in funding decisions, uh, recruiting and hiring decisions, uh, comparative rankings, grant funding applications where they ask for uh, uh, impact uh, indicators, and also just demonstrating the value of a particular university, uh, particular area of university research. The uh, libraries uh, have become much more involved in uh, these type of activities, uh, bibliometric and research impact services. Uh, this particular session, the companion, public, uh, companion presentation, is being done by the uh, University of Waterloo people. Uh, we both have robust programs with uh, a lot of overlap in terms of our areas of focus. Uh, I encourage you to watch their presentation. What we see is a lot of libraries partnering with uh, university administration, uh, uh, colleges, departments uh, in gathering and uh, 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 assessing research metrics. The beauty is that uh, librarians and libraries now have the tools, uh, for example, uh, APIs, uh, Scopus APIs, uh, uh, Web of Science APIs, patent, grant, et cetera, uh, APIs to pull out uh, data. I got visualization software, uh, things like Voss Viewer and Gethy, uh, data repositories. Uh, we have a lot of resources and a lot of expertise to assist in the gathering organization and visualization of research impact metrics. Uh, a couple of things uh, really important here. Uh, research impact metrics, uh, I've got a quote here, uh, but uh, uh, even the most sophisticated metrics are not able to capture the diversity and richness of uh, research impact. There is a uh, increasing interest and concern about what's called responsible metrics. A lot of people have written about this and a number of organizations have been established uh, to look at ways in which we uh, can do uh, more responsible uh, uh, research metrics. A uh, couple of uh, major organizations, the uh, Declaration of Research Assessment, DORA, uh, was established a few years ago to look at uh, how scholarly research is, uh, is assessed and evaluated. The uh, Leighton Manifesto, uh, link to that here, uh, Leighton University, uh, and they have a center CWTS for uh, 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 science and technology. Uh, they have uh, sort of distilled the best practices in metrics-based research assessment. And uh, they're looking at uh, uh, what they call 10 principles for the responsible use of bibliometrics. A couple of other organizations also involved in the science and transition and the in-norms. Research Evaluation Working Group. So the qu questions here, and uh, we're gonna show you our system to do a live demo of uh, one of the visualizations that we put together. Questions is, uh, how do we actually define research impact? What are the indicators of the metrics that we use in these evaluations? How do we present these in a useful and accurate way? Uh, and a lot of people are using visualizations. And then a, a caveat that uh, uh, we focus on quantitative measures, but even the qualitative measures such as peer review 
and uh, recommendations and uh, other qualitative type measures, they're also subject to bias and error. So we've been uh, taking a sort of a matrix view of research indicators um, and uh, looking at the literature, a view that incorporates a number of factors, a number of indicators. So if you look at, for example, articles published by a researcher, in addition just to counts of these articles, you can look at the impact factor of the journals they're publishing in. And we use the Elsevier site score uh, metrics for uh, identifying the uh, number of times uh, articles, uh, articles in a particular journal have been cited over the number of articles published. Uh, uh, very similar to the uh, JCR from ISI journal uh, citation reports. We look, we can look at usage to, uh, the times uh, we see downloads of a particular journal or a particular article, uh, the alt metric or attention score, uh, looking at the position within the author list, uh, acceptance rate of a journal, and uh, for example, the uh, Cabell publications now give you acceptance rates of particular journals or conferences. So in addition to articles published, uh, uh, the old standby, the, the gold standard really is a, a citation uh, analysis, number of times particular articles have been cited. Uh, we can also look at the impact of the citing journal, we can look at citations per year, uh, you can also look at number of grants received, and we've done custom NSF, NIH, and DOE databases of grants received by University of Illinois researchers. Uh, we can look at the number of patents, and uh, we think in many ways the best way to measure innovation is to uh, look at the patents granted, particularly in the, uh, engineering and those other STEM fields. Uh, we use the Patents View API uh, and uh, to uh, uh, generate specific uh, custom databases of patents. Uh, we've just begun looking at uh, awards and honors. Uh, we are now keeping track at the university level here at Illinois of National Academy memberships by department. Uh, we can look at uh, AAAS, uh, we can look at Nobel Prizes, obviously they have a very prestigious award. Startup companies, uh, intellectual property revenues, uh, number of co-authors. Uh, one of the things we look at uh, for NIH grants is co-authorship within a cohort or group. Uh, NIH, uh, once this information is uh, uh, provided to them, uh, indicates the amount of uh, collaborative research being done by a particular group or department. And then there are qualitative measures uh, sometimes uh, uh, there's a, a measure of uh, leadership within the field. Sometimes that's based on uh, uh, social media. Sometimes that's based on uh, appearances in the in media. Uh, it's often referred to as the voice of the person. Uh, peer review uh, and some other qualitative members, uh, uh, measures. So um, if you look at research impact metrics, there's a very rich literature on evaluation and measurement, a number of journals pretty much dedicated just to uh, this topic. Again, much of the focus has been sort of on the gold standard, which is uh, citation data, faculty publications. And uh, I, I, a lot of the quantitative research metrics have been applied uh, in visualizations and dashboards. A couple of commercial systems, Elsevier, Cybell Analytics, and ISI Insight. And if you look at a couple of, of some of the research systems, the visualizations are quite complex. This is a, a system that tries to relate uh, citations with the uh, number of times published and authors in a field. Um, another uh, very complex system that uh, that uh, uh, does a uh, citation analysis and clustering of uh, uh, citations. Uh, our system that I'm going to demonstrate here is uh, uh, a dashboard that uh, where we've tried to provide a, sort of a dynamic and interactive uh, visualization. Uh, we've done this over a number of departments and groups. 
includes uh, a lot of engineering departments, physics, chemistry, uh, uh, particular uh, units such as the Cancer Center, where we've done a visualization of the uh, research uh, done by individual researchers within that within that center. We use the uh, Scopus API and uh, supplement that with the Cyval Experts API to create a, a metadata database, bibliographic metadata database, uh, which includes some of the elements that uh, we've talked about earlier, uh, the research impact indicators. Uh, this all begins actually with one table with the person's name and the uh, Scopus ID numbers. And uh, we build, uh, start building a database from there. A um, whole series of scripts that we've developed to create a co-author grant patents received uh, uh, cited by tables. And uh, uh, early last year, I did a, a webinar, Elsevier webinar, uh, which is still uh, viewable on a uh, longer webinar in the system. Important, uh, uh, other important sort of technical issues here. Um, our system is a database driven and it's web-based. Uh, database driven means uh, we, we can use pretty much the same scripts for display of information, it just reads information from a database of a particular department. I'm going to show you the display, which uh, features uh, display bubbles. All of these are uh, scaled and clickable uh, to, to get to uh, other information. Um, again, uh, using the APIs from Scopus and Cyval experts and custom databases. And then we're using uh, scalar vector graphics, HTML5, uh, some JavaScript libraries to do to do some of the uh, displays. So uh, the elements that are featured in our dashboard are articles published in a particular uh, time period, the aggregate journal impact total. So we use SiteScore to add up the uh, journal impact for publications by a particular researcher, number of times the articles are cited, uh, the NSF, NIH, or DOE grants, patents received, uh, co-authors, and then a cohort, uh, a co-author cohort visualization uh, that we're doing for primarily for NIH grants. Um, so let me try to do this demo. Okay, this is um, the uh, uh, back way a little bit here. This is the bioengineering faculty, the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. So uh, it's a fairly small department uh, compared to a lot of the departments here. We um, are showing articles from 2010 to the present. Uh, each of these bubbles represents a particular impact indicator. So I'll focus on a couple of people here. If I look at uh, Stephen Bopart, he has 257 articles uh, from this time period. If I click here on the, the 257 bubble, I will actually go again. Uh, these are uh, suspended data taken from a Scopus API. Uh, articles, uh, uh, the 257 articles he's written in this time period, abstract, a link to the full text, uh, journal impact site score. I can sort these by time cited. So his uh, uh, highest cited articles been cited 213 times. It's in I typically transactions in medical engineering. Uh, this article in Optics Express, IEEE Transactions in Biomedical Engineering. Here's an article in uh, PNAS, which is the National Academy of Science. You see the site score there is much higher than the site score in uh, some of the IEEE publications. And again, here the links uh, are, are all alive. This is all totally interactive. Uh, link to PNAS, uh, grab the PDF at this point. Uh, I can look at uh, the, these 89 cited references and we're getting these right out of Scopus. Actually, it's interesting since I did this database, this article has been cited a number more times. Now I've been cited 106 times. Uh, uh, so uh, a lot of metadata elements here. Uh, that's uh, uh, times published. Uh, the, the total journal impact for Stephen Bopart is 868. So these are the 257 articles. The site score added up from those articles. You'll see a, a 
some of the other people, Rashid Bashir, it's a much higher uh, uh, impact total, 1189 with 170 articles. You see here, uh, Bopart's articles were cited 3556 times, uh, Bashir's 5310. Just link here for the time cited, takes you into uh, Scopus author uh, uh, display with the total number of articles over the course of his career, the total number of citations. Uh, grants. So I click on the 41 grants here from uh, Bopart. It's 11 from NSF and 30 from NIH. Um, I can look at a uh, particular grant. Um, this is a link into the NSF site. Gives uh, more information about that particular grant. Uh, same thing works for NIH. I go down and uh, NSFs are listed first. Um, NIH grant. This clicks into the uh, uh, NIH reporter, particular uh, uh, grant project. Uh, so uh, group co-authors. If I uh, look at the number of co-authors, uh, this tells me that Rohit Bhargava has published three articles with uh, Andrew Smith. I click on the three here and get uh, these three articles. Altogether, he's got uh, seven. If I bring brochure to the center, you can see who he's written with. So uh, this is an indication of the collaborative nature of uh, this particular court. In this case, it's the bioengineering department. Uh, it, it could be within a group, for example, the cancer center. Uh, number of patents works pretty much the same way. I click on the 24 patents here. Uh, actually, it's now 51 patents. Uh, interesting. And uh, uh, this is a file we update on a regular basis. Uh, Bullport does a lot of work on uh, optical coherence tomography. So uh, you, you can see uh, fairly easy to do a sort of, sort of overarching comparison, eyeball type of comparison. Um, Shuming Ni has published a very few article or fewer articles than some of the other uh, faculty, but has been cited 53, 5,399 times. So uh, his work is, is uh, um, cited uh, uh, more, much more frequently. So, the uh, back to the uh, PowerPoint. Uh, this is a, a picture of the of the uh, uh, visualization or a visualization on our visual. You see, this is a very large AK uh, visual uh, that we have in our what's called our idea lab in the Granger Engineering Library. Um, we have a version of the visualization that fits to the screen size. So it will fit to the biz wall or fit to a laptop or actually even flip to, or, uh, 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 fit to a particular phone if uh, that was what you were looking for the uh, uh, visual, visualization. So uh, in summary, uh, uh, we kind of think that the uh, research impact services, bibliometrics uh, services enhance the, enhance the role of the library. Uh, we're supporting scholarly communication. We're fostering campus partnerships. Uh, we use the same scripts and display software for all departments and research groups. Um, we're also looking at the co uh, correlations over these research impact indicators. And I've got a couple slides on that. And we've developed some mechanisms for weighting the indicators and generating composite impact values. So one obvious question is here is, uh, do researchers that have published the most articles also have the highest number of items cited? You saw in the bioengineering that uh, got some people that have published fewer articles, but they've been cited more often. Uh, is there a correlation between the number of articles in the H index, uh, between the number of grants, number of patents? So we did a correlation analysis uh, over uh, 360 faculty. So we, we combined the departments of 
bioengineering, the Cancer Center, uh, chemistry, computer science, physics, electrical computer engineering, and mechanical engineering, and did a correlation over these 360 faculty uh, uh, researchers. Um, looking at correlations between the, these uh, uh, basically seven uh, elements that we have uh, information on, articles published, time cited, H index. Uh, we code the H index and build it into the database, although we're not displaying it in visualization right now. Uh, site score uh, total, uh, number of co authors, et cetera. So if you look at some of the correlations, for example, between the number of articles, the H index, that's uh, Pearson's R 0.594. Look at the time cited in H index 0.5. So that's relatively low. Um, it actually illustrates some of the known issues with H index, particularly with respect to uh, younger researchers. And if you're only looking at work over the last five to 10 years, you may have a lot of very prolific younger researchers in terms of articles published and time cited, but they may not yet have a big enough H index uh, that uh, correlates highest with that. Uh, whereas you might have some veterans on the faculty who have uh, been in the field for a long time and have uh, high H indexes, but not uh, uh, haven't been as productive or prolific over the last few years. In terms of some of the other correlations, we have, uh, uh, we're look, if you look at the number of articles versus the time cited, that's very high. So there is some variance across departments, but uh, 0.897, uh, number one is the highest. If you look at the site score, the number of articles, the correlation between those two, that's uh, R of uh, 0.836, so it's very high. However, if you look at the correlation between the number of articles written and the grants received, or articles written and patents received, those are very low, uh, and literally not significant. Um, even if you look at the patents and the grants, the correlation of 0.388 uh, is below a, a typical threshold value of 0.5. So uh, those results uh, show that the grant and the patents uh, uh, numbers they actually can provide some useful alternative metrics uh, in, in, when compared to articles published and time cited uh, for evaluating research impact and innovation. Uh, we're going to uh, expand on this now and add uh, altmetric scores. Uh, we, we now have acceptance rates from uh, journals as part of our uh, 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 Cabell uh, uh, service. Uh, we can look at uh, position within the authorship. Uh, we can look at major awards and all, use all those uh, additional factors in uh, some of our uh, visualizations. Which actually kind of takes me to the uh, uh, point here. We've developed a, a system that lets you weight the research indicators. Uh, these are the uh, uh, seven that we're actually using here. Uh, you can assign a particular weight and then uh, come up with a sort of a composite score for a particular uh, faculty member or researcher. Uh, again, uh, this would be something that uh, uh, perhaps a, a department might want to look at where they might think grants are more important than the number of co-authors or grants are more uh, more important than patents, or patents are more important than anything. And uh, you can uh, use that to uh, uh, put together a, uh, a, uh, a composite weighted number for uh, individual researchers. Um, that pretty much concludes my presentation. Uh, thank everybody for listening. If you have any questions, please send an email to my email address. and. Uh, uh, thank you very much.